What is the worst weapon? The temperature at the epicenter of an exploding atomic bomb reaches 7,000 degrees Celsius and looks like a second sun. The explosion booms with 15 kilotons of power. It's like if a city had been bombarded by 3,000 bombers which threw their payloads into one exact spot. Impressive, right? New weapons of mass destruction appear every year. Chemical, biological, thermonuclear, but even the weapon with the smallest coverage area can be so scary that it's banned by all countries on the planet. And right now, we will tell you about the most shocking ones. All of us know that a bullet flies along an almost straight path, but more than a century ago, a technology was invented which gets around this rule. We're talking about expansive rounds. While it flies in the air, its form and trajectory don't differ from that of a normal bullet, but as soon as it hits soft tissue, like a person, the bullet expands. Its diameter greatly increases, resembling an open flower bud. Romantic? Maybe. But the effect of such a bullet is quite scary. Because of the sudden change in its form, it begins wobbling, losing its straight trajectory, and so dances around the body. As a result, the damage to the internal organs is horrifying. In addition, due to the sharp edges of the bullet, the internal tissue is torn apart, which causes profuse internal bleeding. The victim would be in agony or even in pain shock. It's not surprising that this bullet was banned in 1899, soon after it was invented. The ban was then confirmed in 1907 during the Second Peace Conference in Hague. Nowadays, the vast majority of countries have officially renounced their use, though sometimes some individual soldiers illegally use such rounds during military operations. Expansive bullets have another important property. Because of the fact that they open up inside the victim's body, such bullets never pass straight through their targets. As stopping weapons, they are ideal. For example, if a plane is captured, then using regular rounds would be very risky, while expansive bullets can't damage the plane's body or pass through the hijacker and hit people nearby. What do you think? Do the ends justify the means? This next banned weapon seems more like something from a sci-fi movie, as we're talking about lasers. Theoretically, a laser beam can burn through metal and cause a powerful explosion, but too much energy is needed to do so. But a focused laser beam can do something else, damage a person's eyes. Such weapons started being successfully produced in the 70s. The problem is that the blinding laser weapon leads to permanent vision loss. So though this weapon is considered to be non-lethal, it was declared inhumane at a UN meeting in 1995. Since then, then, this type of weapon hasn't been used against people. But the ban did not include laser installations which disable warheads with the help of beams, infrared cameras, optics, and enemy tracking equipment, so this technology didn't end up being fully banned, which cannot be said about a weapon like napalm. Its use against civilian populations has been fully prohibited since 1980 under a UN convention. The incendiary mixture is made up of benzol, gas, and polystyrene. This muck is almost impossible to remove from the surface of skin. It burns for a duration of 10 minutes. By definition, napalm is not a weapon of mass destruction, but enough of it can burn thousands of square kilometers of tropical forest as its moisture and even water practically does not hinder the flames. After all, the burning temperature reaches 1,200 degrees Celsius. Burning napalm releases a lot of carbon dioxide, while the oxygen burns out extremely quickly. This is why even if they were able to avoid coming into contact with napalm, then enemy units in closed spaces would suffocate. Napalm was used as a dangerous stuffing for bombs and shells, even hand grenades. During the explosion, the burning mixture spreads around a quite large radius, but the most horrifying are flamethrowers. Imagine what terror they can create. Napalm is not banned because of the inhumanity of such a weapon, but because it's hard to control the fires it causes, so the only thing which would protect soldiers from having their and their enemy's side burning one another would be the general's lack of desire to harm civilians. 
Very recently, anti-personnel mines were being freely used and in many conflicts. This weapon was only banned in 1997 in Ottawa. Why was this weapon allowed to be used for so long? Anti-personnel mines seem to differ little from grenades other than being delayed in time. The mine detonates if a person approaches it, touches it, or otherwise activates it. It all depends on the type of mine at that point. For example, there are mines which only detonate if something heavier than 50 kilograms steps on it, so for the majority of animals, nothing will happen. But these are nuances. Mines are placed on the surface of the ground or very close to it. Then they're forgotten. As a result, large territories are left dangerous even years after a war. This is why the ban on mines came so late. That's how long it took people to finally realize what it meant for the legacy of the numerous conflicts of the 20th century. This is one of Croatia's attractions, the Pledvica Lakes. This is an amazingly beautiful place where there are dozens or even hundreds of small bodies of water which are connected by cascading waterfalls. When tourists visit these lakes, they are forbidden from leaving the specially made wooden trails because the surrounding forests were mined, and even now, not all of the mines have been discovered. And so, sometimes, stories in the news appear about how a tourist wandered off off the trail believing the warnings to be fake, meant to protect the local forests, and as a result, articles are written about victims of mines. It's also not possible to hide from the mine, while plastic mines can't be detected by metal detectors. Cluster bombs, though they're like mines in that they're explosive weapons, operate completely differently. The reason why it was partially banned in 1980 and fully in 2008 in Dublin is that the area struck is huge, all the while it's also widely inaccurate. Cluster bombs are, in essence, just containers with dozens or even hundreds of smaller bombs. The big container detonates above the ground, after which the small ones are spread around and detonate once they hit the ground. And though cluster bombs, like napalm, are not legally considered to be weapons of mass destruction, governments ban their use because of their destructive effect. We think it's better to leave such a weapon for use in the movie Resident Evil. Unfortunately, all types of banned weapons are still used by some individual criminals, but cluster bombs are a sad exception, as it's the only banned weapon which is used by by various states quite officially. Maybe the reason is that too little time has passed since the signing of the Prohibition Agreement in Dublin, and not all countries with such weapons have agreed to sign the agreement. We hope this situation improves in the future. If cluster bombs were banned quite recently, then poisoned bullets were banned way back in 1675. In actuality, as soon as gunpowder weapons were introduced, so too were they experimented with. But the use of poison is highly inhumane. The poison in the bullet causes the enemy to suffer and can cause damage to different organs. So even after the war, the soldier will have to spend years getting treatment from the effect of the poison. In addition, if the battles are being conducted near population centers, then the risk caused by them being used only increases. Nowadays, according to international law, the use of any poisoned weapons during war is forbidden. Though the ban doesn't cover operations conducted by spy agencies. Various poisons affect the organism in their own ways. For example, they can cause heart failure, and which will resemble a heart attack. Or it can affect the kidneys and liver so that it seems like a person's sick with something. Sound like something out of a spy movie? What if these movies are, in fact, based on actual events? Though poisoned weapons suggest spy wars, they impress more so with their destructive power as a weapon of mass destruction. This is a hydrogen bomb which causes a so-called thermonuclear explosion. Imagine the destructive power of a bomb which is a thousand times more powerful than a nuke. The power of such a bomb is comparable to that of a giant falling meteor. Interestingly, for the makers, the sun was the source of inspiration for this weapon. Inside of stars, a thermonuclear reaction occurs when the light hydrogen nuclei are so tightly compressed that they form heavier helium nuclei. In the process of this transformation, a monstrous amount of energy is released. Thanks to that, we get the heat which is so needed to support life on Earth. Well, a hydrogen bomb works kind of with the same principle, but instead leads only to destruction.
destruction. One day, the U.S. tested its first thermonuclear bomb on Bikini Atoll. There, the bomb was destroyed on the Marshall Island. The explosion fully destroyed this plot of land. Due to the power of the shockwave and radiation of the neighboring islands, not a living organism, nor even grass, was left. Radioactive contamination from the bomb was spread around a 100-kilometer radius from the epicenter of the explosion. The crater from the fireball itself was more than a mile in diameter. This was only a prototype. The use of such a bomb is forbidden, as is any other weapon of mass destruction. Not only because the destructive capability of such bombs is huge, but because people also do not know how to dispose of them. What can be said of experiments with bats supplied with bombs. This crazy idea came to the American scientist Little S. Adams. Using his friendship with the First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt, Adams told his plan to the president. Just imagine to take an army of bats and give them bombs. The experiment was conducted in 1943. They chose bats which weighed up to 15 grams that could carry three times their own weight. They were given the smallest napalm bombs, and since then they've been called bat bombs, with an average mass of 17 grams. More than a million such animals were dropped from a plane onto a specially made fake village. The bats landed there and blew up the buildings. Well, some of the bats separated from the herd and flew away in the opposite direction of what was intended. The reason was simply the authorities hadn't thought of a way to control the bats and didn't think of the fact that some of them may want to fly in a direction not chosen by humans. The bats flew into some U.S. Air Force hangars and burnt them to the ground, after which the experiment was declared a failure. But theoretically, such use of bats makes it a biological weapon, meaning it would also be forbidden by modern international law. Well, and feeling pity for the animals, no? What do you think about these types of banned weapons? Which one of them impressed you the most? Write about it in the comments. Give a like and subscribe to the channel. There's a lot of interesting ahead.